Now, I was told that I wouldn't be taken seriously in this group because I was wearing a t-shirt. Now, I want you to know, I got on jeans and no socks. Now, if you're going to take me seriously, it's going to be because of what's up here, not because of how I look. Dan Chase is my name. Now, we're going to talk about impeachment, and I'm going to explain to you how it happened in history. The history is very simple. I saw a YouTube video that said, you don't need a driver's license to drive. And I thought, that's stupid. And I went, but what if he's on to something? So I watched. He was stupid. I saw several more that were stupid. And then I saw one that wasn't stupid. A man by the name of Eddie Craig said, the traffic laws don't apply, and all you've got to do is look at the definitions and you can prove it. And I said, everything else has been stupid. I'm going to prove this guy wrong. 1,000 hours later, not a typo, 1,000 hours later, I couldn't prove him wrong. And I tried. So I said, OK. By the time I had 10,000 hours in research, I'd gone to court for two traffic tickets, very minor. One, I drove up to the police officer and said, would you write me a ticket? It was on my YouTube political page. I acted with honor and integrity. I talked to the police officer to give him more of my defense so he could destroy it before trial, week or three. And he told me the DA wanted to drop charges. That's how good my research was. I went to the main Supreme Judicial Court. It cost me about $500 to appeal a $50 ticket. It wasn't about the money. I wanted to impeach every last Mr. Bean video justice on the main Supreme Judicial Court for the acts of legal malpractice including, but not limited to, applying overturned cases as good law, violating Supreme Court precedent from the United States, and misstating legal challenges brought to them. For this reason, I got the 1986 legislative report on how to perform an impeachment. That's why I ran for office. Didn't make it, didn't care, didn't want to go, I just wanted to impeach. Now, Janet Mills comes along, and she does what she does. And here's how the conversation went. Oh my, there's an epidemic coming this way. I have to handle it. Janet, what right do you have to handle this? Well, I'm the governor, you know. OK, you're the governor, but where do you find your authority from? If you paid attention, sir, you would see that on June 10th, in my executive order, I showed my constitutional authority. Oh, really? So, Janet, what was that? It was Maine Constitution, Article 5, Sections 1 and 12. What do they say? Well, I'm not quite exactly to understand, but they say that uh, Article 1, the ultimate executive authority, resides in the governor. And you have to go to the sheriff of the whole state and know where she was at. And Section 12 says, the governor shall uphold and enforce the laws. Hey, you know, you're the sheriff of the entire state, no issue with that at all. But Janet, I gotta ask you a question. We've got a bit of confusion going on here. Now I understand you've got to uphold the laws and enforce the laws, but in your executive orders it plainly says, if you don't do what I say, I'm gonna put you in prison and I'm gonna take your money and I'll fine. Now, doesn't that require it to be a law or a regulation or both? Well, mm -hmm. Yes. Where in the Constitution do you have authority? Because there is an exception here and after stated in Maine Constitution, Article 4, Part 3, Section 1, that says the legislature has sole authority to pass laws and regulations. So where did you get that right from in the Constitution? Wait a minute. I said I can enforce the laws. Yes, ma'am, we understand that. But how can you create laws? And if it's a law, and it has prison time, it has to come from the legislature. And why don't you show me the part of Maine's constitution that says, the governor can create laws in this situation. And I've never found it. Can you tell me where that is? Oh, no. Janet, I tried, but no. Now, if there isn't any right for you to pass laws and regulations, on what authority are you doing? Well, there's a statute. Do you realize, Janet, that a statute can't be written in violation of the Constitution? And if it is, 
It cannot be upheld by any law enforcement member of the executive branch, including the governor. Well, that's news to me. You're a lawyer, Janet. You are the AG. I know you know this. Now, where do you get the right? Well, I had to do something. No, ma'am, you didn't. You see, when you look at it, the legislature has the duty to protect the health and safety of the people. How do I know this? Because the Supreme Court said so in 1905. In Jacobson v. Massachusetts, the Supreme Court declared that yes, you can be forced to take a vaccination against your will, suck it up buttercup. I don't like it any better than you do, but that's the Supreme Court precedent. But that's not the part we're talking about. The part we're talking about is there's a smallpox epidemic going on. And the Supreme Court had to decide whether or not there was a legal right to force people to do this and where it came from. And the Supreme Court declared that the legislature had the right and the duty to protect the health and safety of the people of the state. And that the legislature could not surrender that right to protect the health and safety of the people of that state. Now, Janet, are you part of the legislature being the chief executive officer? Well, no. But aren't you operating in direct violation of the main constitution, the United States Constitution, and Supreme Court precedent? Can I go home now? Ladies and gentlemen, you wanted to know why impeachment should happen. I think I just presented it to you in a way that you can understand. Without being a lawyer. And that hopefully you like the story. Now, here's the part that you may not understand. When I came up with the idea of impeachment, it wasn't about getting rid of the impeachment. Not that that's a bad idea, or a good one, just that wasn't the purpose. The legislature shut down. The two leaders of the House and Senate refused to open the door. They are also in violation of the Supreme Court precedent and the Constitution. So the question is, how do you force the legislature to open when the leaders don't want to? I look at everything I have learned in thousands of hours of legal research, and the only answer I could come up with is when there's an impeachment, the legislature has to open. They have to deal with that issue. Once they're open, the legislature then can be forced to handle the legitimacy or illegitimacy of Janet Mills' government's order, the whole declaration of emergency, and the move. So in a very real sense, the entire impeachment history was not about impeachment. It was about getting the legislature. Too bad we do not have many Republicans who are willing to think outside the box of strategy. That's it. That's the story. Nothing else.